Hi, my name is Eric McLaughlin. I'm professor and department chair at the Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center in Amarillo, and I will be talking about practical tips to intensify antihypertensive therapy. As far as disclosures, I don't have any relevant disclosures. So just as far as some background goes on uh, intensifying antihypertensive regimens, um, we know that uh, this is a major problem in clinical practice and that a lot of patients fail to have their antihypertensive therapy uh, intensified for blood pressure management. And at the core of uh, a lot of this issue is clinical inertia, and it is a major problem. Yeah, clinical inertia is essentially the failure of healthcare providers to initiate or intensify uh, therapy according to current guidelines. And there's a lot of potential um, reasons uh, that that might occur. There are patient factors or patient characteristics, such as um, patients uh, who may be older in age, lower life expectancy, multiple comorbidities, or maybe that they're near their target, so, uh, you know, it's close enough, uh, so there might be reasons uh, from that standpoint. There could be physician or clinician characteristics, such as lack of knowledge of blood pressure goals, high patient volume or time constraints. And there, of course, can be patient-provider uh, interactions that, that play into that as well. Uh, in an interesting um, observational study, uh, looking at national ambulatory care uh, medical care survey and national hospital ambulatory uh, medical survey, uh, it's estimated that only about 17% of patients who were above their goal actually received treatment intensification with a new medication if they were above their goal uh, blood pressure. And at the time the study was done, they were looking at uh, greater than 140 over 90. So only 17% is, is a pretty low number. So obviously we need to do a lot more uh, regarding intensifying antihypertensive therapy. <clears throat> so I'll be talking about four brief tips. Um, there may be more, so this is not an all-inclusive list, but these are my, my top four that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. So the first one is use combination therapy. Uh, this is a diagram that I've basically adapted from the 2017 uh, ACC AHA hypertension guideline, uh, which shows basically uh, at the different stages of high blood pressure, how we might, might manage that. But one thing I want to uh, point out in particular is this right-hand side here, where if you have a patient with stage two hypertension, it's really recommended that to use a two-drug combination therapy. Uh, in fact, that's a class one recommendation in the guidelines. So we're gonna use two drugs uh, at one time, typically an ACE or an ARB with a calcium channel blocker, or an ACE and ARB, uh, excuse me, ACE or ARB with a thiazide uh, diuretic. So what's some of the rationale behind that? And here's some older data from 2009, but I thought it was really relevant here, particularly as we talk about tips to intensify antihypertensive therapy. Uh, this is a meta-analysis uh, of over 11,000 participants in 42 trials that looked at the effect, the incremental systolic blood pressure reduction ratio of observed to expected additive effects if you added a drug from another class versus doubling the dose of the same drug. And what we find is that if you just simply double the dose of the same drug, it's about three to five times less effective than if you actually added uh, another agent. So again, um, less effective by doubling the dose versus simply adding another agent. And in fact, um, you're looking at 2.7 uh, 2 to 5.3 times uh, less effective by doing it uh, by simply doubling the dose. And there's some other data that that kind of goes along with that or um, um, is, is congruent with those findings. Um, this is a, a meta-analysis and systematic review uh, published in 2017 looking at quarter-dose blood pressure lowering medications uh, in 42 randomized controlled trials with over 20,000 patients. And what they did here is they looked at quarter-dose antihypertensives versus placebo and standard dosing. And what you can see here is obviously versus placebo is going to be much more effective by adding additional drugs. Um, but even using uh, standard dosing, uh, the use of uh, multiple agents was, was much, much more effective. And um, the effect of, for instance, uh, even quarter dose, very, very low combinations of four drugs uh, was recently shown to be very, very beneficial in the quartet trial that was uh, recently published. So why is that? Why are they more effective when giving a combination? And I think going to the pharmacology of the drugs kind of makes a lot of sense. And in the guideline, they do talk about these preferred combinations. But uh, this is a nice uh, paper that I think talks about combinations of drugs that can be uh, preferred 
maybe useful with some limitations, <clears throat> less well tested, and maybe, of course, not recommended. We would really not want to do an ARB with an ACE inhibitor. But by giving a thiazide a diuretic, for instance, with a RAS inhibitor, uh, you're getting complementary mechanism of action from a pharmacology standpoint. For instance, if I give a thiazide diuretic, which causes, um, you know, diuresis and decreasing uh, systemic vascular resistance, uh, our compensatory mechanism for that might be to increase the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And by giving an ACE or an ARB, we can essentially block those types of effects. And so, um, again, combinations of drugs that would be really great would be like a thiazide with an ACE or an ARB, could be with a calcium channel blocker as well, and also an ACE or ARB with a calcium channel blocker. And that leads into my tip number two. And tip number two is if we're going to use combination drugs, use them in a fixed dose combination rather than as free components. And so this is a table. It is not all inclusive. I've included the what I think are the most common agents out there on the market. But, you know, thinking about that last graph I showed, we certainly have a lot of great combinations that are very good uh, together and have been well studied, uh, such as ACEs with uh, calcium channel blockers and ARB with a calcium channel blocker, ACE inhibitors with thiazides. I think almost every ACE inhibitor out there has a has a thiazide uh, diuretic combination. Uh, similarly, with an ARB with a thiazide or thiazide-like diuretic. And then we do have some other combinations as well, such as a beta blocker with thiazide, a metal helicorticoid antagonist with a thiazide, and our, our two triple combination agents, um, which um, luckily uh, we do have generically available agents now, which be an ARB, a calcium channel blocker, and a thiazide. And so, um, again, tip two, use fixed dose combinations rather than free agents. Um, it also helps improve adherence. And so that's a, a class 2A recommendation for improving adherence. Class 1 recommendation to use um, a fixed dose combinations when doing two drugs at once. My tip number three is if we're going to start a drug, make sure we're re reassessing uh, therapy in one month and adjust it if needed. Uh, I think in clinical practice, oftentimes this isn't done or adhered to uh, strictly. Um, it might be several months, three, six months later, after an antihypertensive medication is either increased or added. And so the recommendation here, again, going back to this overall uh, synopsis on how we init stage initiate uh, a treatment is reassessment is really important. And reassessment uh, to make sure not only the blood pressure is that goal, but also detect orthostatic hypertension, maybe in patients who are at risk, like the elderly or those with postural symptoms, identification of white coat or mast hypertension, um, documentation of uh, adherence, of course, is very, very important. And then, of course, at every visit, uh, reinforcement of adherence um, treatment, and then assistance um, if needed with uh, additional um, interventions to achieve target blood pressure goal. My last tip in this uh, whirlwind presentation, uh, tip mode number four is to use uh, self-measured blood pressure um, readings to guide treatment. And this is a recommendation that is out of the 2017 guideline. It's a class 1A recommendation, so um, highest level of recommendation. And this is based on the systematic review that was done for the guideline. But out-of-office blood pressure measurements are really helpful. And they're recommended to not just confirm the diagnosis of hypertension, but also importantly, again, for this talk, titration of blood pressure lowering medications. Um, and then we use them with telehealth counseling or other clinical interventions. If we use self-measured blood pressure readings, it's really critically important that if we're doing that, we're doing it correctly. So we wanna make sure we're using a validated blood pressure monitor. And I would refer folks to the uh, updated US uh, validated BP um, monitor listing that is at validatebp.org. And also be aware that in January of 2020, there were new SMBP uh, billing codes, uh, both for patient education and device calibration. So again, if we're gonna check blood pressure, whether it be in a clinic setting or at home, we gotta make sure we're following appropriate technique. Um, so out of 10 minutes, I can't go into that, but, but certainly uh, I think most folks are probably aware of um, the, the stepwise process for, for checking blood pressure, but making sure patients are rested, arms elevated, feet flat on the ground, uh, back supported, not talking, um, they've emptied their bladder, et cetera. Um, so that patient education and device calibration code can be helpful to making sure that patients are checking their blood pressure, that they're checking it correctly, and that readings we're getting are accurate. And then for follow-up, 
we can do um, SMBP data review and treatment communication. And this is something you can actually submit monthly. So you got to use a validated device, but you get two readings about a minute apart. You do that twice daily uh, over 30 days. You need 12 or more readings, but you can average those, collect that data, um, document uh, that, of course, the patient's been trained, the device is validated. We get those average uh, readings, and we communicate and modify a treatment plan based on that. So with that, again, just to conclude, my big four tips to intensify antihypertensives. Number one, use combination therapy. Number two, if we're going to use combination therapy, do them as fixed dose combinations. And luckily, most of our antihypertensives out there are in fixed dose combinations instead of doing free components. Make sure that when we're adding or titrating uh, medication that we're, we are reassessing uh, within a month and adjust therapy is needed. And then, again, lastly, use out-of-office blood pressure measurements to guide treatment intensification. So with that, my email is there. If anyone has any questions, comments, suggestions, um, please feel free to call me. And again, I appreciate the American College of Cardiology for inviting me for this uh, brief mini-talk. Take care.